Hey guys, Sterling here, Psychologic Anarchist. Today, we are going to look at a very fascinating subject, a subject that I have taken the time to finally really delve into and get, get at the heart of. The discussion is autism. Autism, vaccines, and anarchism. This, this is a really important discussion to have because a lot of people in the anarchist community have this idea in their heads that autism is caused by vaccines. But I want to preface everything I'm going to say with th that's, a, that's an okay idea to have in your head. Or I understand and empathize why people have that idea in their head. Especially since vaccines have been, in many states, a mandatory practice. People are being forced to get vaccines. So it follows that one should be very suspicious of any mandated government program. And I certainly am, and I certainly don't agree that anybody should be forced to get vaccines. But we can get more into the complexities of this issue here in a moment. First, I just want to define autism. I want to try to explain autism. What is it? What, what is autism? Well, the term comes from the new Latin word autismus, and the root word is auto which just refers to the self, right? So the idea behind autism is that a person gets really involved with themselves and they disassociate from whatever's going around in the environment around them. So some of the key symptomatic traits or characteristics of autism are an inability for these individuals to look you in the eye and difficulty socializing, in some cases difficulty connecting with other people and empathizing. Now I want to be clear on this though, I, I've really listened to a lot of autistic people speak and talk about these issues. It is an urban myth that autistic people cannot empathize at all. There are some people who seem to think that autistic people have an inability to empathize and that's not totally true. Um, check out the website Wrong Planet uh, created by an autistic individual himself and they have spent time debunking this idea. Another uh, key trait in, with autism being that it is a neurodevelopmental disorder is a delay of language learning, a delay of potty training, uh, and delay of various cognitive characteristics. So that's what autism is characterized by. But I want to start off by immediately saying that I don't believe, and a lot of autistic people do not believe, that it is necessarily a de facto disease, right? Autism, what it really, what it really looks like is a, 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 either a genetic advance or just genetic differences. Not saying that people with, some people with autism are not heavily burdened or disordered, if you will, by the, their symptoms or characteristics. But some autistic people, a growing number, tend to see it as a, as a genetic enhancement or a bit of neurodiversity or just a difference or a gift, if you will. And that's how I look at it. I don't see it as a disease or an illness of any kind, although that there are some seemingly delays or mal malfunctioning aspects to it, but we just don't really know right now. We have no idea what causes autism if it is a true neurological deficient or malfunction. So over the last couple of decades, especially in the, in the 70s and into the 80s, this idea has really surfaced, as we mentioned earlier, that autism has been caused by vaccinations. I want to try to put this to rest once and for all, put this idea to rest once and for all. It has been thoroughly refuted with a few nuances and minor discrepancies, but it's been altogether, it's been altogether debunked that vaccines cause autism. Now going back around 2003 and 2004 there was a doctor by the name of Andrew Wakefield 
And there, there's a lot of backstory to this, but we don't have time to go into it today. But this Dr. Andrew Wakefield was one of the first doctors to, to suggest via his research that there's a connection between autism and vaccines. But as soon as his research came out, of course, there was a, a maelstrom of upset individuals and especially upset parents who now feared for vaccines and feared getting their children vaccines because of this. So naturally, there was a lot of studies that attempted to replicate Wakefield's. There was a barrage of studies. It, it ended up being, according to this individual, according to Steve Silberman in his book, Neurotribes, The Legacy of Autism and the Future of Neurodiversity, it became one of the most replicated studies, one of the most looked at studies. And when everyone started, when these new researchers started to really dig in and look at the methodology behind Wakefield's work, they found glaring methodological problems and they even uncovered fraud in his work. It looked like he tried to change the timeline or alter the timelines in a clever way of the onset of alleged autism in the individuals that he studied after they got vaccines. Instead of being a couple of days after the vaccine, after they received the vaccine, it ended up being sometimes weeks and sometimes months before they developed the alleged symptoms of autism. So that was a disingenuous and unethical practice on Wakefield's part. It, was, it also came to light that he had worked out a deal with some attorneys to uh, file a case against vaccine manufacturers in order to make him so. So he was going to publish this article, and at the same time, he was, gonna, he was planning in advance to sue or to make a, file a case against certain industries. When all of this came to light through all of these researchers, and there was even a research done, a, a, a meta-analysis, and if, for anybody who doesn't know, a meta-analysis is when researchers go in and they look at a variety of different studies to find the common traits or the common similarities there. So the, these researchers looked at epidemiological studies on uh, to see if the, the MMR or the, uh, the mumps, measles, and rubella vaccine caused autism spectrum disorders and they did and they did not find any link in this meta-analysis between MMR and autism so when all this of course bubbled to the surface Andrews uh, or Andrew Wakefield had his medical license revoked he came into the into the forefront as a complete and total fraud so we now know through this and through the multitude of studies that have been uh, that have been done at, as we've moved into the future, that there is no connection between autism and vaccines. Now, I said there was a few little discrepancies or little details. There is still some speculation that what we refer to as regressive autism or autism that starts a little later than younger children. Uh, maybe the result of heavy metals, you know, i.e. mercury in vaccines. But just so everybody knows, uh, one of the ideas was uh, thimerosal, which contains mercury, in vaccines is what potentially caused autism. But most uh, thimerosal has been yanked from vaccines as early as 1999 and 2000. So it's not a common product in vaccines anymore. So, and... and this moves into another fact. One of the interesting characteristics and why I don't think autism is really a disease necessarily anyway, and I, I agree with the neurodiversity camps, that it's just a, a genetic, a natural genetic difference, possibly an evolutionary trait that's being manifest somehow or another. But uh, we don't really know what causes autism. So to jump to the conclusion anyway that vaccines cause autism is making a huge leap of faith and committing scientific uh, errors because we don't know. We have an idea, some people have an idea that genetics and the environment and epigenetics, which just means the environment and genetics working together within the body and without the body, that this is the epicenter of autism or what caused it. But even if that's the case, how do we know for sure that a 
that genetic differences are automatically tantamount to malfunction or disease or illness, right? Uh, high IQ is a genetic trait. Genius IQ is a genetic trait, but we don't refer to that as a disease or malfunction. Like I said, autistic people, especially what they've, what's been referred to as lower functioning autistic people, uh, do suffer some developmental delays and uh, abdominal gastrointestinal problems and these are definitely issues and that is right that does raise concern that there is something potentially neurological going on but there's big there's a there's you know huge arguments a lot of controversy in this area and trying to uncover exactly what is going on so I appreciate you guys staying on board and uh, listening to me as I went through this. This has been really exciting stuff. Autism has not been something that I have specialized in, but I found myself uh, really interested and fascinating by the concept and uh, watching a lot of videos. And I'll put some re relevant links in the in the description box below. And uh, also the Steve Silverman book is great. I haven't read it all yet, but I've read the part on vaccines and I've read di some of the different historical, uh, about the historical people that he painted a picture as potentially being on the spectrum, you know, what they refer to as the autist uh, autistic spectrum disorders. So again, I appreciate the time. I really do. If you think I provided you value today, I'm gonna ask you to commit to please subscribing below and uh, another little notification, I just got an application for the Psychologic Anarchist. You can download it on iOS or on Google Play. Just type in Psychologic Anarchist, and all of my videos and articles that I produce will be available there and make, uh, hopefully, uh, allow easier access to the content. <clears throat>